gentlemen of the jury before entering directly upon my charge covering the law in this case i will say to you that if you have any prejudice against divorce dismiss it from your mind entirely for you by your verdict do not give a divorce nor do you refuse a divorce you merely find a principal question of fact and such other questions of fact as may be necessary to throw light upon the principal question of fact <clears throat> then after you have rendered your verdict the court enters such decree granting a refusing a divorce as may be proper under the circumstances you can relieve your conscience and your mind of all thought on that subject for all you have to do is to simply decide the facts which i will call to your attention and when you have done that you have no further concern in the matter para therefore you should handle the question presented to you as you would any other question of fact and just as you would a contract case without sympathy or passion one way or the other <clears throat> the desertion which has to be made out to entitle a person to relief in a proceeding of this kind must be willful malicious and without a reasonable cause and persisted in continuously for 2 years therefore you can see the relevancy of the testimony as to what took place at the time of the alleged desertion to wit as to the fight between the sister of the libellant and the respondent as to the conduct of the husband directly at that time and as to his conduct shortly afterwards in the matter of the arrest growing out of that event that has been gone into very thoroughly and that is all as i say to throw light upon the main question so that you may make up your mind whether when the wife left the house on that day there was a willful and malicious desertion without a reasonable cause or whether she was justified in leaving at that time if it was a willful and malicious desertion without reasonable cause the husband to start with has properly begun his suit and has made out that very important part of his action para but if you draw the conclusion at the starting point that it was not a willful and malicious desertion without reasonable cause but that on the contrary the husband had been guilty of cruel treatment and if the wife into bracket under all the circumstances that have been detailed to you as to what occurred on that day and before that day and considering the conduct of the husband immediately after that day as possibly throwing a side light on what happened on that day bracket close was justified in leaving him because of his cruel treatment then there was no desertion on her part at that time para as the issue is drawn and as you are to decide that as being the time of the desertion unless there was a desertion on her part at that time mr johnson the plaintiff would have no right to a verdict in this case if there was a desertion at that time willful and malicious and without reasonable cause which was persisted in for 2 years continuously thereafter then he would have a right to a verdict at your hands in this case there was a great deal of testimony 
covering a long series of years since that time but that is all of the value only in the <coughs> same way to enable you to decide the main issue that is was the liberal lunt's conduct from that time on as you can draw it from the testimony consistent with the allegations in this case that is the belief on his part that there had been a willful and malicious desertion on the part of his wife or was it not consistent with that belief para if it seems to be consistent with that belief it helps you to look at the case in one way if it seems to be inconsistent with that belief it helps you to look at the case in another way i am not going to review all of the testimony in the case for the reason that i do not think it is necessary to do so the case was presented to you ably by trained counsel and it has been argued to you and they have given you their view of the testimony para in addition to that you listen <coughs> listened to it very attentively it was repeated in its main points by several witnesses on both sides and the cross examination brought out the view of the other side as to it after all is said and done you are the judges of the testimony it is for you to say whom you will believe it is not for me to say whom you will believe it is for you to say just exactly how much belief you will put in any testimony that is given to you and how much of the testimony you will put aside as not worthy of your belief it is for you to say what deductions you will make from the testimony and what interferences you will draw from it para i may be obliged in the course of this charge to refer to points of the testimony but if i say anything as to the facts which is not in accordance with your recollection you will take your own recollection and not mine i want to leave the facts entirely with you because as i say they are for you to decide you take the law from me and the facts from the witnesses in making up your mind 